Oh, welcome back, everyone. You're here with us at Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry. We have our second guest, and oh, just continuing on this journey with children, children's book authors, and they have this magical fun to them. And my my next guest here is just uh, she's taken. I love this. I actually I love her book. It's more than it's more than a storybook. It's how to really make stories come to life and write your own from them. So I'm going to first, I'm going to introduce you to my lovely Joanne. And Oh, and Joanne, let me just read your bio to everybody first. And I should have asked you this before. Is it Gramlich or Gramlich? Gramlich. Aha. Okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. We have Joanne Gramlich, and she is a speech pathologist and the award-winning author of Talk, Play, and Read With Me, Mommy which was inspired by her personal interest and passion for helping young children and watching them learn and achieve. She believes that every child has a voice and should be heard, and that it begins by empowering a child to tap into their imagination and skillful mind. Joanne feels her philosophy of making learning fun brings out the best in our children and helps them to explore their own creative abilities during their early years and going forward. She lives in Buffalo, New York, where she continues her writing, educating, yes, speaking, and creative endeavors. I love that. Hello, Joanne. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me on your show. Oh, my goodness, it's absolutely my pleasure. Okay, I'm going to first I'm gonna share this with everybody, and I will share pictures. I have to tell you, I received Joanne's book, Talk, Play, and Read With Me, Mommy, and it was like an explosion of party fun. Like, <laughs> this, Joanne is just so committed to making things fun that, like, this, the book was in with toys and fun fun paper confetti and bookmarks and my god Joanne I felt like I won something that's what happened uh, <laughs> I'm glad you like it it is it really is fun that's I mean again the theme is making learning fun so it all yeah. even begins with packaging right so people are it's it's very inviting the 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 colors on the front the rainbow of toys with the little boy you know dreaming about everything a kid yeah. would dream about so and like and like I said, on the back of the book, there's also um, an image of toys. And right off the bat, before anybody opens up the book, there's an I Spy game. So you can take you can look yeah. on the back of the book and uh, peek at you know any of those images and grab a boat and say you know to your little one, can you find the little sailboat on the front of the book with the rain, you know through the arch yes. of the rainbow of toys? So right there, right right in the right in the beginning, like you said, a splash yeah. of fun. So. <laughs> Splash. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's a splash of fun. And I have to share this. So everybody, you've got to even just like, just to look at this book, you're right, it's fun. And on the back, what really actually helped me, me, and I have like a very active, crazy imagination brain all over the place. So I, I kind of feel like I'm a little kid. Um, when mm -hmm. I, I looked at the back, it's very colorful, but it's organized. So the front is an explosion. And then on the back, it is very organized in a way that I could see me Oh, I'm just going to pick out the one. I love the little pur purple pig. Like, he's just so cute. Oh, yeah, it's so and, cute. <laughs> and, and I would be like, if I was a little kid, going, oh, Mommy, can we read the book with the little purple pig? And it's it's kind of like just one you just fall in love with. But, okay, so this book, super – it's not um, – I would like everybody to know this. This book is, is literally how to talk, play, and read with me to interact. So this book isn't like a story story. It's an interact. It's how to interact with, with children. And, right. Yeah. Right, so it's um, and it, it provides interactive activities to help enhance um, children's language skills. So therefore, it's pretty much all kinds of games and activities set up for the birth. It will start with infant, toddler, and then preschool levels. Um, so so it's activities, individual activities that can be played. Let's say, um, during, of course, during daily routines, which are the uh, the majority of learning takes place during the daily routines. Yeah. So say, for example, um, a mealtime activity, you can talk about the, you know, if we have the meals, you can talk about the colors that are on the plates, um, the shapes of the food on the plates. Um, you can talk about um, trying to recall the, the food that you ate during the yeah. mealtime or snack time, play time, or I'm sorry, snack time, meal time. Um, breakfast time. Just there's there's so many things to talk about, and it's a lot of colorful language. So that's that's for example, you know what's going on in the book. Well, well that's another way to describe colorful language. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I love too is that um, the two thing thing. One big thing was I love it 
one of them is ask calls, ask, ask, ask. But I love that it's because you're going deeper and exploring. You're exploring the just even what you're looking at. And and I'm going to throw this one out. One of the terms I just heard or learned, you know, when people, a person say, what does it love? What does it mean to love someone? And one of them is to be concerned or interested in. And one of your games, and I'd love for you to share a little bit about this, is called What Did You Say? And I don't know if you know that one so well as many of the other ones. But that um, um, can think of which one. Okay, so I don't did. know exactly which one that is, but I, because I, you know, developed so many. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking, what did, what did you say as far as, um, did you recall, like, oh, okay. So I'm trying to think of the premise of the core of the um the activity, I could probably well, I can kind of help you this one. I love this one. Just okay, you know, sit next to your child, tell him that you're going to play listen and tell, um, uh, listen and tell game. Say a sentence that has important information for your child to remember. Like, this is so valuable. Oh my gosh, um, because you know what? Like, when you do tell, oh my gosh, I can tell adults, like, later on, say, can. Can you meet me here or do something like this? And and we forget, like we don't, we're not putting it. Like how, where do we put it in our brain? So if we can teach them, you know, as their children, we can say something. Oh, okay. Now it. now it's yes. Now it's coming to me. So this is this activity is um, understanding, listening, and recalling information. And the point of it is again. This can be geared toward, you know, any age level in the sense of going from that toddler preschool level. But you're kind of targeting targeting the, the children. Um, you're asking them questions. You can start out with higher level questions or, level, you know, levels that aren't so high. You can modify it because you're, you're really going to know how to, how to go forward based on their responses. So if you're going to ask a child, you know, what state do you live in or what city do you live in, maybe maybe he doesn't really know. Maybe he doesn't right. understand. And you can make it a little more complex or, you know, bring it down to a basic level. But you're just, like you said, you're trying to share that information and, and let them process it and ask them and have them repeat it back and have them recall it. So then it's theirs. The information is theirs. And, the, and of course, any subject, you can talk about that with any subject. I think I mentioned um, birthdays, ages, yeah. addresses, phone numbers numbers, cities and states, and it can be broken down to maybe um, something as simple as, like I said, one question, when is your birthday? And then if they don't remember, you're going to say, oh, your birthday's April 10th. When is your birthday? And it's just going oh. back and forth with that kind of information. Oh, so. that's really neat. Like you actually, yeah, you do tell them. You let them know what it is and then ask them right away. And they go, oh, that's so yeah, fun. And then, yeah, and you start out, like I said, with a base, one basic question, and then you can, add, you know, add information. So when is your birthday and what year were you born? So now you're, you know, asking, you know, providing or requesting a little bit of more information and looking for them to retell it. And if they can't, if they don't know it, that's when you're going to provide it and you're going to go back and forth till they remember it. So it's because... It. Yeah, a lot of the kids, I was asking some kids, I think it was today or yesterday, about their birthday. And unfortunately, some of the friends that I work with, they come in and they do not know their birthday. So, or maybe possibly they don't even know the street they live on. But the point is, that's how you're going to, you know, get that information for them to remember by having those conversations, which are really important. So. Yes. You know, I remember when we were little, um, my sister and I, our parents always taught us that our license plate, because if we were ever, you know, at a playground or a park or whatever, and we we can always get back to our car. Mind you, I, I feel like I would recognize the car more than the license plate, but, you know, if we were Me at, too. at if my security guard or if we had to go somewhere and we didn't know to say, you know, station wagon. Right. Or something. <laughs> but, so, and it's. Speaking of that, I, I, okay, so talking about recalling, I have a terrible sense of direction, I, or, or even, I inherited from my father, I know that, so I'll go to a mall, if I don't track where I'm going in that mall, I will not remember which way to get out, where my car is, it's terrible, so, so you see, like, if I'm having issues like this, kids have issues, of course, like this, so that's why it's important to communicate so many different topics with your little ones so they can begin to understand how to live in our world. So, um, yeah, just, I mean, just think about simply organizing a book bag for, for a preschooler going to preschool, trying to help them understand, you know, put your pencils in here, put your books in here. It's a lot of information that we take for granted, but if you really break it down in a simple fashion, they can begin to process it. But you have to be so patient and just give them time because each kid learns at a different rate. Yeah. Um, some learn a little quicker than others, but they all can do this. So, for example, I um, 
worked with a child who came into my school with um, six words a minute for reading, which was pretty low. He was in third grade. And by the, with me taking the time, to, I, I took him under my wing. I'm not a reading teacher, but, you know, I bought a book on how to teach your kid how to read. And by the end of the school year, he had 100 words versus <gasps> six words. Oh so gosh. he is a – I know, he's a poster child to say that – Everybody can read. Everybody can communicate. It's just in different fashions and different ways, you know, based on, on, on their individual needs. Mm-hmm. I so. think you, I love that you said uh, it's the give them time to process it. And I think that, that oh, my gosh, that's a big one. Because, yes, I love color is going to help us process things and remember um, shapes and animals and relating them. But if we don't give them, like what you said, patience, and if we don't allow them, any of us, have the, the time right. to process it, we can't. We just, it's not committed. Right. Exactly. And the thing is, everybody, you know, learns differently. There's also different different learning modalities, visual learners, auditory learners, hands-on learners. Yes. So every child is taking things in differently. You know, some are more distracted than others. So especially in the home, you have to remember that you have to eliminate a lot of the distractions so your kids can learn during those daily routines. Like I said, there's so many opportunities, key opportunities to take in so much vocabulary, because especially between that birth and five before they're going to school, and of course that's when they're going to build their vocabulary to get ready for kindergarten. So daily yeah. routines, like I mentioned, the meal time, um, play time, bath time, dress time, that's where it all begins, just taking the time to be patient and then also and letting kids – to, yes, be present and take the time to be patient and also let the kids be active in these uh, daily routines. Like, for example, in the kitchen, I mean, children's little broom sweeping the floor, right? Those, <laughs> the, a broom is available for children. There's so many different objects available for kids to be used in a functional way. Let your kid, you know, you're sweeping the floor, let your kid sweep the floor. So, And you have some, there's so much dialogue that can take place just from that simple little task. So just imagine all throughout the day, there's so many opportunities to help your child, you know, build on his expressive and receptive language skills. Yeah, I'm really glad that you brought up that, to be active. It's, it's one thing, it's like, I want to call it, you know, one-dimensional learning. We read something, then two-dimensional, we learn in here. Or that, but, but you're right, interacting and participating. Now, how, would, right. you, would you think that, um, I'm, just, I just have a, I'm just curious, if I'm, I have your book in my hand, and let's say I have mm-hmm. two, little, two little children, let's say, um, is it best that I spend the time just one-on-one with a child or, or them both at the same time? Um, well, of course, I I do. I work with kids in school and after oh, yeah. school. Um, yeah. So of course, there's there's uh, opportunities in both situations. So when you have a you know a few kids, uh, you know a couple kids working, you're working with a few of your children at a time. Of course, they're they're going to be models. It's called peer modeling. Hmm. So so they can bounce they can bounce information off each other. Um, and as they're responding, you know, maybe the one child doesn't really know what a polar bear is and maybe the other child does. So the one's going to express it and the other one can, you know, listen and comprehend it, comprehend um, the information that he's hearing. And then they can think, pair, and share. They can share the information back and forth with each other. Once, mm-hmm. once you realize, gee, they both have a little understanding. Now, tell me, what do you think a polar bear is? And, and he can, you know, relay that information to the other child and the other child can relay the information back. So, yes. Definitely, um, definitely. If you have the opportunity to have more than one child, you know, in, in within the activity, definitely it is a positive. So, and then of course one on one. I mean, you're you're always. I mean, one on one, it's still you plus your child, and you're bouncing the information back and forth. But like you said, there's benefits for both situations. But ideally. In our settings, the majority of settings outside, you know, of the home we have you, it's a lot of um, interaction with other people. So, so it's definitely beneficial for for both situations. I love that. I love that you highlighted them both the situations. Um, here's another. I just I'm curious. The question again. I love this about how we okay. learn. And you talk about. I love this. I love that you have um silly stories. And and it's good to be silly. Oh, I'm gonna ask you this. Um. It, when I say silly, I can imagine being silly, like, you know, just, you know, saying silly things. And then there's, what about baby talk? Um, do you have, like, because you're a speech pathologist as well, 
what is the, I don't know what the word is, um, is there a benefit to baby talk or is there, does it hold children back if we, if we let them do it or we do it to them? What's the difference between silliness and silly and, and baby talk and things? Well, when you at, when you mentioned that, did you mention um, the silliness from one of the activities called yes, silly stories? Yes. All right. So <laughs> I do that all the time. For example, um, let me see. Let me just think. Um, when I'm reading a story with the kids just to keep them engaged, so let's just say we're talking about a cat. So so the cat was okay. So the cat was hopping down the street. Now maybe that's not a good thing because maybe a cat. When, what I'm point what I'm trying to say is that um, cats don't really hop. They walk. <laughs> they run. So so it, it, it and it makes the kids laugh. Or I'll say um, I'm trying to think about something in the back. You know I. Yeah, I'm trying to think of something like I I can't think right now what I'm trying to say. I don't put you on the spot. No, I, oh my gosh, I, I know, no, no, it's okay. So, so, so let's say okay. Say we're um talking about cooking in the kitchen, right? I'm going to cook my meal on or on a sink and it's something like that. I'm going to wash my dishes in the bathtub. I'm going to brush my hair with a toothbrush. So what it does, it, it alerts you to see if they're really listening because hopefully they're going to respond and say, Miss Gramlick or Miss Jojo, what are you talking? You know, and then get them to say no, and they'll correct it. So then I know. Yeah, so it makes them, it does make them laugh, but it's, it also makes, you know, the activity a little more, I mean, of course, more fun because we're laughing, but it also gives them the opportunity to think and respond with the correct answer. So that way I really know they're engaged when I say something silly, and then they respond and they say, stop, wait, that's not right. So, right. And, yeah, but, and they actually can point out what the answer, whatever, no, you wash your dishes in the sink. <laughs> Right, right, and you brush your hair with a brush. You don't use a toothbrush. So you understand, like, just twisting, yeah. uh, twisting it up a little bit to make it more, more inviting, more fun, and, like I said, make sure they're, they're on target and listening. So, yeah. um, And as far as the baby talk, well, okay, so, of course, when the kids are learning their sounds in the words as they're developing their um, sound repertoire, Mm -hmm. They are going, so for example, um, some of the kids who have difficulty producing the R sound might say wabbit for rabbit. Yeah. And parents, when I work with them after school, they will, the l real little ones I have after school, they will comment and say how cute it is. But we do want to try to uh, model the appropriate sounds mm -hmm. so then they can get that in their um, sound pattern repertoire. Yeah. So, we can model like the er, like a growly dog sound for the R sound, or a baby sleeping for the S H kind of thing like that. But uh -huh. I, I guess as far as the baby talk, you're always trying to model what's appropriate. But you're still going to hear with your you know two, three, and four year olds if they're they're having delays with the product sounds and words, the pro speech production skills. You're still going to hear a little bit of that, which it's okay because they're developing it. So, but you do try, you do want to try to model the appropriate way so they can get in their sound repertoire because eventually they're going to want to be able to master sounds uh, with their letters to get them ready for reading and literacy. Yes, I love that, that you're, you're sharing this because um, I, it gets really technical. We're talking about sound patterning and the formation of how the the, the mouth shapes things. But you're it, at all at the same time, you're saying, you know what, if we can make this fun and if we can make this a bond and a connection between the two people, all that other stuff, you don't need to know how technical it is because it, it comes about through fun. Right, exactly. I mean, the, the title of my book, Talk, Play, and Read, they're actually, um, they're, it, it is a message, and it's, it's, a, it's a simple message based on uh, neuroscience brain development. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's a very complex topic, but it's just saying, if you break it down to a simple message, it's basically saying stimulate, stimulate your child through that birth through five through talking, playing, and reading, all kinds of engaging activities. But that's what's happening. So the brain can make the connections and grow and be ready for, like I said, the five-year-old five or kindergarten and five-year-old uh, level. So they're ready to take on more complex skills and tasks. Yeah. But, yeah, that's 
So. And it's and it's so personal. I know this one that I do love. It's on it's on page ninety eight. If anybody has the book and they like to follow along, but <laughs> it's called the, the things I like. And I think that's great when they say cutting and pasting and talking about pictures are fun activities your child will enjoy doing with you. Will give your child some colorful magazines. It's almost like a vision board in a neat way. But ask them to cut out some of their favorite pictures and glue them to uh, on some paper. And you know I remember doing that when I was in school and. You don't like it's kind of making you happy anyway. So the child is happy; they get to connect and relate, and then they get to come home and they get to show you what they've done. And right, it's just full of love. <laughs> because yeah, because they're creating a book, they're creating their own story about what they like. So yeah, I remember doing it too. You know, bringing magazines from home to school yeah. and coming up with like a it's kind of like a scrapbook. So. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then eventually, you know, if depending on what point they are, I mean, they can continue on with the book because if they're not at the point of writing, well, at least at this point, they can glue the pictures on the book and learn to develop their writing skills. They can actually write the one word and just, you know, maybe it's a sailboat or a Barbie doll and then write that one word and then eventually they can write an actual sentence about that picture. So it, it actually is, is an idea to keep it going and it's something they'll value. They'll have it. So, yes, and of course, then share. And then of course, the parents can read with them once they're at that point. You know, there's so many different things that creative ideas, like you said, making learning fun. There's so many different things. So, for example, like today in Buffalo, we don't we don't have school tomorrow because we're having a snow day. Ah. So, yeah, so it just came on the news. Um, we're having a snow day, and I, whenever we do it, whenever this happens, I remind the kids. I said, all right, everybody. I I was with the kindergarten, first grade, and, and I also had a little one after school, a three year old. I said, look outside because right now it's just raining out. So I said, the snowflakes are falling, and what's our chance? And everybody starts going, Sammy, Sammy. So we know Sammy's coming down to do the snowball dance with his friends, and they're going to chant tonight the windows and look for him. And so you see, it's also a little finger play song that they can do. Yeah. Just creative learning about snowflakes and reminding them every snowflake has a different name. Every snowflake looks a little different. And you can have so much fun singing these songs, a little jingle about it. So these songs are the best. <laughs> yes, finger play songs. Oh my gosh, so much yes. learning in that. Uh, the um, finger play songs. I have, you know, of course, several in the book. Well, a handful, anyways. Um, so they help the kids with their memory skills, socialization, attention. There's fine motor and gross motor skills that they're learning because you know the body movements and the actions of the songs and then of course developing their vocabulary because of the repetition acting out the song and there's one more thing that just slipped my mind and I can't remember what it was you but so many just interests. the and participation this, of the whole yeah. thing so well in this book I have to share this with everybody this book has they're all not numbered but they're just they're titled and every page has a different activity like there's like 60 70 of them like a hundred my gosh there's so many like it's um strategy for developing speech and language skills like this. This book is amazing. Now, I have to ask you, it has, first of all, share with everybody, it has won the Pinnacle Book Achievement Award. And my question to you, Joanne, is what, where would you like to see this book go? What was your dream for this book? <laughs> well, um, I would love this book to get, I mean, ideally, it would be great to have this book in the hands of mommies at that prenatal stage or when they just have their baby in the hospital setting because mm -hmm. I hear so many stories of people when they have first have their baby, they say they, they're putting this little baby in their car and they have no idea what to do. So mm -hmm. I think it would be great as far as I know, I know I have um, sisters that had babies and I know they said they got care packages when they had the baby, mm -hmm. their babies. So I think ideally it would be great because it's a great tool of how to start to engage, um, you know, engaging with your child beginning at birth because I think I, I believe that a lot of people are not quite sure that it starts with stimulating the baby's senses, you know, um, soft rattles in front of their eyes, soft noises, um, turning their head to, to sound sources, just simple things that people might not be aware of in order to start communicating with their little one. Like, and it, and it, is, it is, it's, it's not, of course, it's not actual words, but that's how they're communicating um, at, at that, you know, birth through about birth through five months and then six months they're babbling and then they're beginning to uh, 
uh, produce jargon imitating adult patterns, and then by one they have a couple of words. But you have to make sure that they have they call it the prelingua prelingu uh, prelinguistic skills before they can actually talk. So learning how to point to things, um, learning how to make gestures, learning how to turn take. Um, Wow, he's learning how to share. We've There's so many different adults. things. Yes. What's that? I'm sorry. As what's adults, that? We've grown and gone through so much. I love the the from from babble to jargon to words to sentences to pointing to just why we are so accomplished. I know that's a, that's the the basis of the book. If you read through it, you you'll see you'll see that it's it's really pretty much going from a sound to a syllable to a simple CBC word like cup yeah. to um, some, you know, a, a one word vocabulary to two, two word phrases, simple sentences to more complex sentences and then to, to uh, conversation. But that's the point. That's how you get your child ready. That this right. is, It's really key for kindergarten, right. so in literacy skills. Well, I'm going to make a recommendation that I love your thing about getting it to moms who are literally in the hospital, first first times, brand new moms, because it even takes the moms, like it gives them an opportunity to learn how they're going to teach. So I want to say thank you for writing Talk, Play, and Read With Me, Mommy. And this is Joanne Gramlich. And you can, where can they get your book? I want to make sure that everybody knows. Okay, so it's available at talkplayandread.com. And then it's also available at Amazon.com and BarnesandNobles.com. Okay, perfect, perfect. And I, and I also wanted to mention, um, what else did I want to say real quick, that I am working on Talk, Play, and Read With Me Daddy. So there's going to be a daddy book coming, oh. hopefully, down the road. I, I'm almost done with it. It's just, you know, of course, I work two jobs and I'm busy, so but I'm doing the yes. best I can to get it ready. And so, you're a mom. So because right, I want well. Yep, I just say because we want to include dads too. So yes, oh, I love that. Thank you for that sneak peek coming up. Like, yeah, uh, we're going to feature that. So thank you so much. So I have just had the best time with with both of you. This this whole show is so important to learn in such a fun way. So thank you, Joanne, so much for being a part of thank you. It there, thank you so much. So talk, play, and read with me. Mummy is available. Everybody, Joanne Gramlich, and we just yeah, everybody just have fun, have fun, and connect, and and ask, 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 learn about other people. Yeah. All right, thank, thank you everybody. Bye, Joanne. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>